Okay, class, today we're in Algebra 2, Section 2.5. Apply the remainder and factor theorems. Apply the remainder and factor theorems. Before, you use special patterns to factor polynomials. Now, you will use theorems to factor polynomials. Key vocabulary, polynomial long division, and synthetic division. When you divide a polynomial, f of x, by a divisor, d of x, you get a quotient, polynomial, q of x, and a remainder polynomial, r of x. f of x divided by d of x is equal to q of x plus r of x divided by d of x. This right here is your remainder. The degree of the remainder must be less than the degree of the divisor. One way to divide polynomials is called polynomial long division. Example one, use polynomial long division. Divide f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 4x minus 6 by x squared minus 3x plus 5. Solution, write polynomial division in the same format you use when dividing numbers. Include a zero as the coefficient of x squared in the dividend. At each stage, divide the term with the highest power in what is left of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. This gives the next term of the quotient. Okay, let's break down what was just read to you. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is write the problem as a regular division problem. So you're, it's being divided by x squared minus three x plus five. So that's on the outside, x squared minus three x plus five. And then what's being divided you put that on the inside. Okay. Now notice that the degree goes 4, 3, 1, 0. 4, 3, 1, 0. Well, what's missing? The 2. So we got to make sure we put a squared in there. So it'll read 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And that's what they did here. 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 0x squared because the x squared term was missing plus 4x minus 6. All right, now the next thing I do is I take a look at my x squared here, and I look at my first term, 3x to the fourth there. What must I multiply x squared by to get x to the fourth? And that's going to be x squared. Now, if I multiply that by 3x squared, my first term would end up being 3x to the fourth. See that? So 3x squared times x squared would give me 3x to the fourth. I'm always trying to match this first term here with the first term there. Now, after I determine that first term, everything has to be multiplied by 3x squared. So I get 3x squared times 5. That's going to give me 15x squared. That goes right up on the x squared term. I got 3x squared times a negative 3. That's going to give me a negative 9x cubed. And as we already determined, I got 3x squared times x squared. And that's going to give me 3x to the fourth. Okay, now I treat it just like a regular division problem. And I'm going to subtract. 3x to the fourth minus 3x to the fourth goes to 0. So that's gone. A negative 5x cubed minus a negative 9x cubed ends up being 4x cubed. Why? Because here I have to remember that I am subtracting this term. That means that everything here goes to the opposite. So that's going to be negative, that's positive, and that's going to end up being negative. So once again, 3x to the fourth minus 3x squared uh, to the fourth, that's zero. A negative 5x cubed plus 9x cubed ends up being a 4x cubed. And then a 0x squared minus a 15x squared ends up being a negative 15x squared. Okay, so now look at what happens. Um, here, I got 4x cubed minus 15x squared and now I bring down my 4x. 
I bring down that 4x. So now this will now go into this. Okay, now what can I multiply x squared by to come out with 4x cubed? All right, if you can see it implicitly, then you will know that x squared times 4x would give me 4x cubed. Now, if you can't see that, then what you should do is this. You should divide. Take the first term, 4x cubed, and divide that by x squared. And then you'll come out with 4x. Once again, you take uh, the term you're looking at, 4x cubed, and divide that by x squared. x cubed divided by x squared is just x, and then the 4 comes along for the right. So you know you got to multiply by 4x. So that's how they got that 4x right there. And remember, when, when you do that, the 4x must multiply all three terms. So 4x times 5 is 20x. 4x times a negative 3x is a negative 12x squared. 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. Okay, after that, we do the same step we did up here. We have to remember that we are subtracting because we're dividing. But that subtraction must go all the way through. So here, the positive 4x cubed becomes negative. The negative 12x squared becomes positive. And the, 20, the positive 20x squared, it becomes negative. All right, so now look what I get. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed, that goes to 0. So that's gone. 15x squared plus 12x squared is equal to a negative 3x squared. 4x minus 20x is equal to a negative 16x. And then I bring down my negative 6. Okay, now look at my next term. My next term now is a negative 3x squared. So I have to ask myself, x squared times what would give me a negative 3x squared? All right, once again, if I'm not good at it, I just set up my division. Negative 3x squared, that's my first term there. Divided by x squared, that's my first term there. All right, so now divide. x squared divided by x squared, that's 1. Or I can say x squared divided by x squared, that's really x to the 0. And what is x to the 0? That's 1. Now, what is 1 times a negative 3? That's a negative 3. So in other words, a negative 3 times x would give me a negative 3x squared. So we end up multiplying by a negative 3. Okay, as in the previous steps, the negative 3 must be distributed to the 5, to the negative 3x, and to the x squared. Well, what's a negative 3 times a positive 5? Negative 15. What's a negative 3 times a negative 3x? That's going to be a positive 9x. What's a negative 3 times x squared? That's going to be a negative 3x squared. Okay, then I have to remember that I must subtract. And don't forget that subtraction sign must go all the way through. All the way through. So, the negative 3x squared becomes a positive 3x squared. The positive 9x becomes a negative 9x. And the negative 15 becomes a positive 15. So now I'm going to add going all the way down. A negative 3x squared plus a positive 3x squared. That's gone. A negative 16x minus 9x. That's going to be in a negative 25x. And then a negative 6 plus 15 will end up being a positive 9. Okay, now, since I have nothing else to bring down, this is going to be my remainder, a negative 25x plus 9. Now, watch how we write this. I'm going to write this as 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 4x minus 6 over x squared minus 3x plus 5. Right, that's what we started with, and that's equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 3 plus my remainder, which is going to be a negative 25x plus 9, that was my remainder, over 
what I was dividing by. X squared minus 3x plus 5. All right, let's take a look at that again. This was our original problem. We had this divided by this. After dividing, this is what we came out with. That's that. That's the quotient. That's what we came out with. Okay, and our remainder has to be uh, expressed as a fraction. A negative 25x plus 9 over x squared minus 3x plus 5. Example 2. Use polynomial long division with a linear divisor. So in other words, we're going to take this polynomial and we're going to divide it by the linear. How do we know it's linear? Because it's only to the first degree. X minus 2. So we set the problem up the exact same way. X minus 2 is on the outside. And we're going to put that into X cubed plus 5X squared minus 7X plus 1. Now notice, 3, 2, 1, 0. Everything's in order, so there's no need to add a 0 term in there. Once again, 3, 2, 1, 0. And we're going to use the same trick uh, um, to help you out. So I got x, I got x, and I'm dividing x into um, x cubed. If I'm not sure how to do it, I do the same trick. I take my x cubed, put it on top, take my x, put it on the bottom. What is x cubed divided by x? That's going to be x squared. So that gives me my first term, x squared. Now, what is x squared times a negative 2? A negative 2x squared. What is x squared times x? That's going to be x cubed. Now, i got to remember that I must subtract. So everything becomes its opposite, negative, and that becomes a positive. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. So that's gone. And then i got 5x squared plus 2x squared. That's going to give me 7x squared. I bring down my next term, which is a negative 7x. Now, x times what would give me a 7x squared? Come over here if I'm not sure. I got 7x squared divided by x. 7x squared divided by x. 7x squared divided by x is 7x. So, we multiply by 7x. So 7x times a negative 2 is a negative 14. 7x times x is 7x squared. Once again, we're subtracting. That sign's got to change, so negative. And that becomes positive. 7x squared minus 7x. That's, excuse me, 7x squared minus 7x squared. That's gone. A negative 7x plus a 14x would give me a positive 7x. I bring down my next term. I ask the same question. X times what would give me a 7X? If I'm not sure, I just take 7X and divide it by the X. With 7X divided by X, that's going to be 7. So that tells me everything has to be multiplied by 7. 7 times a negative 2 is a negative 14. 7 times X is 7X. I... Uh, Apply my subtraction. All right, this positive 7x becomes a negative 7x. This negative 14 becomes a positive 14. 7x minus 7x, that's 0. And a positive 2 plus 14 is 16. So that's my remainder. Okay, now all that remains now is for me to express this in the correct format. So we take my original problem. And we had to take x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 2. And we had to divide that by x minus 2. And that was equal to x squared plus 7x plus 7. And we have a remainder of 16. So we take that remainder of 16 and we put it over x minus 2. And we are finished. This is our answer right here.